Welcome to the Ready for a Wonderful Clear Connection that's not interrupted for you. And I have a wonderful little chorus song from Z. He's mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over you with joy. With joy. He will rest in his singing. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. While we pray for a good connection, let me do it again. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty, is mighty. He will rest in his love. He will joy over you with singing. The Lord thy God, Satan, we bind you, Satan, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. You will not prevent the word of God from going through to the people of God. We will be Ezekiel 3, 16. One more sip. Now it came to pass at the end of seven days. Remember, Ezekiel went back by the river Chabar and joined all of the people there and waited on the Lord. And so now here we have the report. It came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord God came to me, Ezekiel, saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. And here we have Miss Kathy coming, hallelujah, with her wonderful graphics that she searched for just for you. I pray that you will look at them and enjoy them. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them a warning from me, the Lord says. Here we go with a warning, and it's the same warning we need to hear. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. And so, you know, we don't want to bring warnings. We don't want to bring all of these. You know, we want to be sweet and kind all the time. But you say, the Lord says, if you don't do that, you are preventing him from saving his life. Till he walks in the truth, he's lost. And yet, if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. I will, we need to take that those words very seriously as we confess we are Christians and witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to walk in this way. Again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because you did not give him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered. But his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous should not sin, and he does not sin, he shall surely live because he took warning. Also, you will have delivered your soul. Wow, now that is laid out very plain for us to understand. Morning, Miss Kathy Morrow. And then the hand of the Lord was upon me there, and he said to me, Arise, go out into the plain, and there I shall talk with you. So I arose, and I went out into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there, now just picture that. You're walking along and you look ahead of you and standing there is the glory of the Lord. 
like the glory which I saw by the river Chebar, and I fell on my face. And then the Spirit entered me and set me on my feet and spoke with me and said to me, Go, shut yourself inside your house. And you, O son of man, surely they will put ropes on you and bind you with them so that you cannot go out among them. I will make your tongue cling to the roof of your mouth so that you shall be mute and not be one to rebuke them, for they are a rebellious house. Isn't this something? But when I speak with you, I will open your mouth and you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, he who hears, let him hear. And he who refuses, let him refuse, for they are a rebellious house. So you see, the decision is still with the person. God doesn't take away. He doesn't make a puppet out of people. You choose. You are, let yourself be drawn unto him or you don't. I pray that we all are letting ourselves be drawn. We move along to chapter 4 of Yehezkel, Ezekiel. You also, son of man, take a clay tablet and lay it before you and portray on it a city, Yerushalayim. Lay siege against it. Build a siege wall against it and heap up a mound against it. Set camps against it also and place battering rams against it all around. Moreover, take for yourself an iron plate and set it as an iron wall between you and the city. What, isn't this some portrayal? Set your face against it, and it shall be besieged, and you shall lay siege against it. <clears throat> this will be a sign to the house of Israel. Wow, a severe sign. But a severe sign for a severe rebellious people, right? Oh, let that not be us, please. Lie also on your left side and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it. According to the number of the days that you lie on it, you shall bear their iniquity. For I have laid on you the years of their iniquity according to the number of the days, 390 days. So you shall bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. Can you imagine just lying on your left-hand side for 390 days? I mean, they're going to keep coming. People are going to start saying, is he still lying there? Did he give up? And they're going to come and look. I mean, God is dealing. Wow. Woo! And when you have completed them these days, lie again on your right side. Then you shall bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have laid on you a day for each year. Therefore, you shall set your face toward the siege of Yerushalayim. Your arm shall be uncovered, and you shall prophesy against it. And surely I will restrain you so that you cannot turn from one side to another till you have ended the days of your siege. Wow, not only does he have to do that, God says, I'll restrain you so that you cannot turn. You can't get tired and decide, boy, I'll lay on my back a while. Oh, no. No. All of these days on the left side, all of these days on the right side. Also, take for yourself wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, and spelt. Put them into one vessel and make bread of them for yourself. 
I guess enough to last all those days. During the number of days that you lie on your side, 390 days, you shall eat it. And so I pose the question and I read you the answer immediately. And your food which you eat shall be by weight. I'm, you're going to weigh it and you're going to obey me on every bite. 20 shekels a day from time to time you shall eat it you shall also drink water by measure one sixth of a hin from time to time you shall drink and you shall eat it as barley cakes and bake it using fuel of human waste in their sight <clears throat> and listen to this response. And then the Lord said, So shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles. Where... And then he said, See, I am giving you cow dung instead of human waste. Thank the Lord for that, right? Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, surely I will cut off. They shall eat bread by weight and with anxiety, and shall drink water by measure and with dread, that they may laugh, waste away because of their iniquity. And we move along to chapter 5 of Ezekiel. And razor, take it as a barber's razor, and pass it over your head and your beard. And then take scales to weigh and divide. Burn one third in the midst of the city when the days of the siege are finished. And then you shall take one third, strike around it with the sword, and one third you shall scatter in the wind. Bind them in the edge of your garment. And then take some of them again and throw them into the midst of the From there a fire will go out into all the house of Israel. Thus says, this is Yerushalayim. I have set her in the midst of the nations and the countries all around her. She has rebelled against my judgments by and against my statutes more than the countries that are all around her, for they have refused my judgment, not walked in my statutes. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have multiplied disobedience more than the nation, even done according to the judgments of the nations that are all around you. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, indeed, I am against you and will execute judgments in your midst in the sight of the nations. And I will do among the like of which I will never do again because of all your abominations. Therefore, fathers shall eat their sons, shall eat their fathers. And I will execute judgments among you, and all of you who remain, I will scatter. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord God, surely because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your abominations, therefore I will also diminish you. One third of you shall die of the pestilence and be consumed with famine in your midst, and one third shall fall by the sword all around. I will scatter one third to all the winds and I will draw out a sword after them. Thus shall my anger be spent. I will cause my fury to rest upon them and I will be avenged. And they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it in my zeal when I have spent my fury upon them. Moreover, I will make you a waste and a reproach among the nations that are all around you in the sight of all who pass by. 
So it shall be a reproach, a taunt, a lesson, and an astonishment to the nations that are all around you when I execute judgments among you in anger and in fury and in furious rebukes. I, the Lord, have spoken. When I send against them the terrible arrows of famine, which shall be for destruction, which I will send to destroy you, I will increase the famine upon you and cut off your supply of bread. So I will send against you famine and wild beasts, and they will bereave you. Pestilence and blood shall pass through you, <clears throat> and I will bring the sword against you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Good morning, Miss Maria. And Connie says a good thing. Thankful for the grace provided by Jesus Christ. Oh, the blood of Jesus. And so we move right along to chapter 6 of Ezekiel. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward the mountains of Israel and prophesy against them. And say, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God to the mountains, to the hills, to the ravines, and to the valleys. Indeed, I, even I, will bring a sword against you. And I will destroy your high places, and then your altars shall be desolate. Your incense altars shall be broken, and I will cast down your slain men before you and before your idols. And I will lay the corpses of the children of Israel before their idols, and I will scatter your bones all around your altars. In all your dwelling places, the cities shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate, so that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate. Your idols may be broken and made to cease. Your incense altars may be cut down, and your works may be abolished. The slain shall fall in your midst, and you shall know that I am the Lord. And I often wonder, the shutdown, the mass over the face, all over the world, he shut down. He shut everybody down. And he shut all the idols down. I mean, just name them. Uh, I'll say ball games for one. Nobody, some, some places nobody allowed to come to the game at all. Empty seats. Other places, little scattered patches, right? Did we have that before the Lord? Yet I will leave a remnant. Praise God, I will leave a remnant so that you may have some who escape the sword among the nations when you are scattered through the countries. And 2,000 years of that has just happened. And now he's bringing them home today. Are you aware of that? Are you looking at that? It's a miracle. It's the fulfillment of the word. And then those of you who escape will remember me among the nations where they are carried captive because I was crushed by their adulterous heart, which has departed from me, and by their eyes, which play the harlot after their idols. They will loathe themselves for the evils which they committed in all their abominations, and they shall know that I am the Lord, I have not said in vain that I would bring this calamity upon them. And thus says the Lord God, pound your fists 
and stomp, stamp your feet, stamp your feet, and say, Alas, for all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they shall fall by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. He who is far off shall die by the pestilence. He who is near shall fall by the sword. And he who remains <clears throat> and is besieged shall die by the famine. And thus I will spend my fury upon them. And then you shall know that I am the Lord when their slain are among their idols all around their altars, on every high hill, on all the mountaintops, under every green tree, and under every thick oak, wherever they offered sweet incense to all their idols. So I will stretch out my hand against them and make the land desolate. And that's exactly what happened to the land of Israel. Desolate for years. Yes, more desolate than the wilderness of Dibla, Dibla, in all their dwelling places. And then they shall know that I am the Lord. Woo! Do we know he's the Lord this morning, having read that? All right, we move along, praise God, to the New Testament, where Jesus has paid your price, my price of sin, freely, and given us free salvation. And we are reading from the incredible book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, just... Just listen to the difference of these words that are now yours and mine. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest. As he has said, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience, again he designates a certain day, saying in David, today, after such a long time, as it has been said, today, today, November 2, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God, for he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, 
piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Wow. Do you see the difference? <laughs> Do you see the difference? Wow. Let us enter into that rest. All right, let's move right along to Psalm 104. We have already begun reading it, so we will pick up with verse 24. Psalm 104, verse 24. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. This great and wide sea, in which are innumerable teeming things, living things, both small and great. There the ships sail about. There is that Leviathan, which you have made to play there. These all wait for you, that you may give them their food in due season. They die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and you renew the face of the May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May he looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the hills and they smoke. Will I have my being? My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. I will sing unto the Lord while I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have breath in me. My meditation of him Alleluia, alleluia. May sinners be consumed from the earth and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Proverbs 26, verse 27. Proverbs 26, verse 27. Whoever digs a pit, he who rolls a stone will have it roll back on him. Anyways. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Well, we praise God, don't we, today for the wonderful word of the Lord. Thank you for coming. Thank you. There, we just had one with these little broken connections. We will prevail. We are winning the battle. Thank you, precious Lord. Father God, we read today that we can come boldly before your throne of grace. And we come, we come humbly. We come grateful. 
for your word, for all that you've given us, how you fight for it. It is so wonderful, Lord. We bless you for it. Father God, we pray for the peace of Yerushalayim. We pray for her peace. We pray for her power and her continual drawing unto you. We pray, Lord, that you would provide for them food and supplies, medicine, whatever they need, Lord. We ask you supply in these days of lockdown. Father God, I hold up America to you. I hold up America on these last two days of voting. And Lord, I pray that you will put it upon every American's heart. Not the illegals. Let the illegals be discovered. And let it be set aside. But Lord, every single citizen, legal citizen of America, Father, stir them to go vote and stir them to vote for righteousness. Have them vote for life, for life, for good order, order and law that we love and have followed for years in our country, that peace would be there. Father God, cause them to study, to read about every single candidate to listen, if they can, to anything recorded, and then make a wise decision. Father God, cause each one to make a wise decision, not according to their opinions, but according to your word, according to your ways, your ways of law in order and righteousness, your ways of grace and mercy and love for the nation and her people. Father God, we'd ask that you would keep our president surrounded, Lord, with mighty angels of protection, all of the administration. And we'd ask, Lord, particularly for the enemies, the enemies who wanna turn America upside down, who are lying and saying what a terrible, terrible country we are, when it, the whole rest of the world wishes they had what America has because it's all come from your hand. Your hand. America is yours. Yours. And why? Why? For what reason? Our comfort? We're more special? No. No. You chose this country to put forth your word to the rest of the world, to raise up missionaries to go, missionaries at home to be givers, to cause the church of the living God to become strong. That's America. And so, Lord, we'd ask that you would cause the church of the living God, your church, your body, Lord Jesus, to get up, step up, and preserve what you created. You created it through righteous people. And we are the benefactors living here all these generations later. Father God, we are trusting in you. <clears throat> we are trusting in you that we will have grace, your grace, your mercy. And we will recognize that and get rid of our lazy habits and our lazy places, our idols that we have let the comforts of this present life get in front of serving you. Lord, cause us to be inspired to serve you, to live for you, that you are first 24-7 for the rest of our lives. Hallelujah, Lord. We come to you. We cry out to you, Holy Spirit, for help. Help us. Comfort us. We cry out, Lord, for healing for people who are in despair. Raise them up with joy. People who are, they're broke. They don't have any money. They don't know what they're going to do. Lord, please let them in hope today see that your hand will bring a miracle. 
You will take care of them. Father God, lead many to their salvation today. And we cry all these things, Lord, these good, righteous things from you. We cry out to you today. We fast and pray and set this day aside for you at this important, crucial time for America. Amen? Amen. And we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for this salvation. Draw many, many to their born-again experience today. Precious Holy Spirit, amen. Have a great day in the Lord. I love you all so much. Bye-bye.